Yo, what's guys? Ben Fire here back from the video, and so we're going to be hopping into another offense in College Football 25. This one is going to be super high-powered, and the formation that I'm talking about is Gun Bunch Tight End, one of the best formations year in, year out in Madden, and it is super, super good in College Football 25 with some added firepower that we have never seen before. Now, we're going to be in Alabama's offensive playbook, so figure that you have one of the best teams in the game, and they have one of these best formations in the game as well. This playbook, this Alabama playbook is nice. You have trips, and you also have bunch tight end. So you have two really good formations there. Now, some of the new plays, slot option, PA verticals, whips, deep smash, birds delay. All these plays are pretty much brand new, and then Z out as well. Now, in my audibles, I like inside switch, inside zone, triple out, PA verticals. Also, in the video, we are going to talk about whips, X spot, uh, mesh, and then obviously some of these run plays are solid. I like the classic inside zone. You could go RPO alert bubble as well. But point being, you have options here. So let's just start out in one of our big play potential plays and that is going to be the PA verticals which was on the right hand side there we're just going to go with a classic cover three because this is a really really good cover three beater the setup is quite simple you're just going to smart out Y streak B throw A on a corner route play should look like this all you have to do is snap the ball get enough time and then boom it is absolutely bombs away I mean, super easy, simple setup there for you guys. All you do, once again, smart out Y, you're gonna streak B, you're gonna corner out A. Um, the outside third is gonna get pulled down by this corner out. And then just so much space there. Again, I do like smart routing it because you want that post to be a little bit shorter. Here's what it would look like if you kept that post deep. So let's say we kept the post deep, how would it work? You snap the ball, A, it would take longer to develop, and B, it would be a lot tougher throw. You would need some really high throw power to be able to make the pass. So you want to be able to smart out it, even if you smart out it a little bit shorter, let's say it's second and eight, it, it's still gonna work. So overall, this setup is really good. You also have B, so let's say we even wanted to just do a simple Set up like this, you could, you have the crossing route that you can hit over here if you get enough time. So the play can be dangerous. Again, with that setup, it was just RB on an angle route. Maybe you even throw just A on a backside drag. You can do this. I don't hate these setups at all. So you could step up, check it down. Again, you could play the angle route. I like throwing them in the flat and then going with the angle route because you saw how much it opened up this crosser. Obviously you can check down the running back, but I like to hit him, maybe undercut it. And you see, it just creates a lot of space, a lot of big play potential. So that's gonna be the PA verticals. I like running between those two, three setups. And again, when there is so many good setups in this offense, you don't need 20 million setups per play. Obviously certain plays will like better, but that setup money. Uh, let's just talk about the inside zone real quick. I don't run the ball a whole lot when I'm running bunch tight end, neither should you guys. It's not really a great running formation just because you have those wide receivers lead blocking. And as you see right there, they didn't really block anybody. So again, with inside zone, you see they're not blocking anybody. We're still getting decent gains against just a normal nickel face look, but I mean, it's nothing to write home about. Anyways, next up we have the triple out. And the triple out is going to be a very, very solid play here. With triple out, you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of this deep corner route. So we wanna kind of build our play around that. You could go smart out of B. I would smart out him. You could streak Y and then with X, you could do a few things. I like personally leaving him on this out route because if they're not playing press coverage, more times than not, this out route is just gonna be open default. So you could just kind of play it like this and you can hit him over here and it's almost a six or seven yard gain. Five yards at the at the worst. Um, so, so you know, you're going to hit him a lot. Um, going back to our play here. So we could go out route. Uh, as far as A, it's a little bit confusing on what you can do here. You can do a, a few things. You could go flat, you could go, uh, what's that wheel route? How do we go wheel, wheel? So you could do this. Oh, that's the wrong wheel. 
uh, your wheel. So you could do something like this. I, would, I wouldn't hate that because you can hit him in the seam. Uh, let's try and hit Bernard over here though. Obviously you will need time to make these passes. You see we got hit as we threw. We were still able to complete that route. Um, even while getting hit, but obviously not getting hit is better. So you will need time, which is why I wouldn't hate blocking the halfback and getting you some extra time. Maybe you throw him on a little trail route. Again, you're not, you just don't want him to use her B really at the end of the day. You hit him over here. So against cover three, is it decent? It is. I think it would maybe even be better from the short side of the field just because that outside third would maybe not play as well. So let's try it actually from there. Uh, obviously cover two is going to be probably your better coverage for that play. But you see, you're going to have a little bit more space to throw this on the sideline and it is going to be able to get open kind of from there. Um, as far as the other setups that you want to, if you wanted to mix between, could you, you could, you could maybe go something like this backside slant and maybe you throw him in the flat. So you could go slant, corner, drag. This setup will be decent. It gives you a few other options. Backside drag. The corner is still going to be open. Maybe you don't run this play from the short side of the field. Maybe you run it more from the middle. But it's really just about the options. So um, again, you would go backside drag. You would go slant. You could still streak. I would still smart out. And then you could just throw him in a baby flat. So overall, really solid setup here. You could wait, you could hit the slant over here. Obviously, if you wanted to and it was open, you could check it down to the running back immediately, but we just have options here, which is what you want. Next play is inside switch. This play is gonna be really, really good for a few reasons. I like this little hitch route, but um, you definitely wanna take advantage of these guys over here. So um, I like the simple setups. I like using the post route and uh, so what we're going to do here is we are going to set up a couple ones. One thing I like to do is mix it with a backside wheel. So we will kind of use that a lot. I like backside wheel. So maybe we go with either Y or B on a little zig route. And then I will put B on a manual flat so that when I motion them across, we have something like this. So this is going to just open up a few things. Now your first read could be this little zig. You could feel free to hit that. Um, obviously something else you can do to open up the post route is go with a little streak over here. So maybe you just go streak, you could still go zig. And then if you wanted to create that flat combo, you could still go wheel. So this is something you could do. You see the wheel is open. Now you could also smart out X just because he is just a little bit shallow. So you could smart out him, you could streak, you could go, you could even go drag if you want with the with the uh, wheel combo. Or you could again block the tight end, maybe you go backside drag with the tight end, you flat B. You could go with something like this. This would be a good, good setup over here. So you have A and then you could hit X um, over the top if you're able to. Also, if you are trying to get him open because it looks like that guy's not biting at all. Maybe we say whatever, we're just gonna go backside drag, streak, and then you keep the corner out, you can block the running back, or maybe you throw him on a backside angle. Um, I'm not sure why these guys are playing so good on the post route. I do not remember them playing. I just played an online game and they were not playing this good. So um, I don't know if it's the hash mark or what is going on with that post route, but usually it gets open. Um, clearly right now it's not. So if it's not getting open, you take the underneath stuff, you use it as a distraction. Um, again, you could go hitch. Maybe you smart out it again. Um, I would maybe go angle route still. You could even go underneath slant. I'll just go hitch though for now. So now you... And then I'm going to get him open and we get hit. Um, okay, so... This play does work, believe me. I, I, I have used it online and it's worked. Um, I don't know why the struggle is absolutely real right now, but here's a simple, again, setup you could do. Please give us enough time to throw it over the top and that is what it should look like. So I don't know why that was such a struggle, but that post, trust me, it can get open. It's really good against man coverage. Um, and yeah, 
I like that play. So something I also like doing is going with like a backside curl flat with the wheel combo. So what you could do is go with B. If you didn't know, you can actually motion this B receiver out. So if you wanted to throw him on a drag or anything coming from behind, you could. So let's say we were going with this flat combo. I wanted to motion this guy out. We could snap him like around over here and this would really open him up. The post is gonna bring everybody up and you can kind of hit him from there. So that would be a combo I like. I'll show you one last little route combo for this and then we will move on because we do have a lot of other plays to go to. Uh, you could go curl flat. Maybe you just go trail or maybe you, again, you can never go wrong with the flat angle route or flat wheel route. I don't hate either of these. You can motion him out and then you can snap him like this and this is gonna give him a little curl flat combo over here. Those are the guys you wanna decide between throwing to, the curl or the flat really in this scenario. So let's set up a few new audibles and go into some of the rest of the plays that I do like. I'm a, I apologize for inside switch. Again, normally this play works great. I don't know why it wasn't working. It is fine, but it's a little bit weird. So we're gonna throw whips in here. Again, mesh is solid. Actually, let's go X spot because mesh does kind of be similar to the whips play. So let's go X spot. And then in here, is there any other plays that we liked? Let's just throw mesh in. Okay, so that'll be all our passing plays. And then we'll throw in this little RPO alert just for one other play. So we're gonna start out in whips. And with whips here, it is solid. You see, you have this tight end zig route that you can really take advantage of in these other deeper routes. Um, you have another zig on the left with the receiver. That's very solid as well. So you want to kind of take advantage of that. I like smart routing X. You could streak um, this Y receiver and then with A, you could maybe just throw him on like a little backside trail over here. Again, whenever you're in doubt, what's the route that you can go to? It is this route combo. You can go to it. So something like this, it's going to stretch the user out. You can hit this wheel route. It's been open pretty much every play. I haven't thrown it at all, but you can see it's been open on every play. So if he's not defending it or manning it up or something, it's going to be open and he's going to have to respect it. So anyways, over here on this left side, you see this guy, he is going to be absolutely wide open against cover three, cover two, any coverage really cover four. Again, I am smart routing X. So we have that. Um, another thing that you could do is go with like a D crosser. I like this combo and then I like going with a flat route. So this combo is really, really good. You'll see B should be able to get over the top here, which he does. You can hit him. Again, obviously hoping that it's a linebacker and that he can hopefully not take your lunch money and jump that route. So again, this combo really good. If you have to wait, you can hit the tight end. Like in that window, you probably even wait another second. That's gonna be your last read, but it's pretty simple when it, you're running a setup like this. If he defends the corner route, then you throw it to the crosser. If he defends the crosser, then you throw it to the corner route. Let's say he plays over the top on the left and then he defends the crosser. Then you hit the check down with the running back pretty much. So overall setup is absolutely lethal here, guys. You wait, you hit him. You could possession catch. You could honestly rack catch underneath or cut underneath, make that play. So. That is gonna be whips. Let's go into the RPO now. Do I love the RPO? I don't. It can be good, but there's not a whole lot of space for it to work because it's not something like trips. That slot receiver is just so close to the line of scrimmage that when you run it, you're not really gonna get as many big play potentials as you would running an RPO out of a trips tight end offset or a trips tight end itself. So keep that in mind. Obviously, if you hand the ball off, it is a slower handoff, which means he can shoot the gaps. If you're playing a good defense, they can also block shed. So that's why I kind of just like the regular inside out, but it's there for those that like the RPO game. Anyways, let's just go into mesh here. Mesh is going to be quite similar to what we just did. Um, basic setup that I like, two drags, a streak, and a corner route. We block the running back. We keep things simple around here. These drags going to be good. You can check it down to them. If you want a simple play, let's say you're setting up your audibles or something, or you look down at your phone for a second, you're like, crap, I got 10 seconds. We, we call mesh, we call this mesh play. We throw B on a streak. You could honestly run it stock as well. 
if you really had to. I do like having the streak to open up this corner route. You could run it like this. You could hit X over the top right here, but you're giving yourself options um, at the end of the day. Now, let's say we want to incorporate a little bit of motion. You certainly could. So maybe we go with a, again, what could you do? Maybe we go backside drag with the tight end. We go wheel, we go backside flat. I haven't even dipped really into the motion at all, but you can get a lot more creative with some of the motion here and boom, you could hit the halfback in that window. Obviously maybe even want to throw it a count earlier than I did there, but that's an option. So, I mean, mesh, there's not a whole lot to it. It's solid. You could get creative with it. You can build around it. Maybe you go try and throw him on a post. Now he's going to, on a, you could go post or crosser, backside drag, and then you could even still go wheel route. You can go wheel route without anything over there. It's just not great. You see, this one is deep enough that he actually does get over the top with no underneath routes besides the drag, which really didn't pull down anything. So that's a good play. Anyways, our last setup is going to be X spot, which is going to be pretty solid here. So what we're going to do here is kind of take advantage of this corner out from the slot. So against heavy coverages like cover three or cover four, where maybe he's pressed and this outside third is really playing your corner routes from the X wide receiver or square wide receiver, you motion him out. This is going to guarantee that this player is going to get open. And obviously, I would, if you're going to run a setup like this, I would probably recommend that you run it more from a hash mark over here, a wide hash mark range, because here you're actually trying to get some rack on it. Generally with the X receiver, you're not trying to. So do you have to motion mount? You don't have to. It's going to be a little bit of a tighter throw without it. And I did not mean to motion him across all the way. I didn't realize you could motion fluently like this. That is actually cool. And he just keeps going. I did not even realize that yet. But as far as B, you could leave him on the flat. You could go with a zig route. Um, with A over here, what can we do? You guys already know this combo. You could go angle route on the back end. I don't hate that. You could block this tight end over here. I like spreading him out to get more space. But and maybe if you do this, the uh, angle route, maybe if you do the angle route, you just leave him on the flat just so that it's not as congested. But um, this A route, it's not awful. I just don't love it. B, you could hit him all day. It's five yards. You'll take it. You want to force him to man him up, play with his user, or play underneath altogether. As far as other setups you could do with this play, maybe you just go straight up um, streak. You could motion him across, and then you could go backside slant with RB on a flat. And then with A, you could leave him on that. You could go deep cross. So you have options here and you just want to take advantage of them mix it up but i mean you guys see the wide array of plays we have if you guys want to see it in the gameplay let me know as well but that's gonna do with the video if you guys are new to the channel please hit that subscribe button it would really help me out hit a thumbs up on the video as well let me know what you guys want to see next and peace i'm out of here